Welcome back, Peter. It's good to see you. Kelly, good afternoon. Good to see you as well. Good have, to be here. I have to imagine this tragedy will shine a light. Your registration is open till October 31. You have 124 teams already, 33 countries. Um, does any of, of the entrants that you've seen so far offer the kind of solutions that could prevent something like the Hawaii wildfire from happening in the future? I think so. And the beautiful thing about so at the X Prize Foundation, what we do is we put up a very large cash purse. Uh, it's $11 million. It should be much larger given the billions of dollars going into loss of property and the lives lost. And we say to you know teams, entrepreneurs around the world, I don't care how you do this, as long as you can do it safely. Can you detect a wildfire at the moment of ignition? Right? When's the best time to put it out? Not when it's a conflagration, but at the initial spark, whether it's a lightning strike or whether it's terrorism, whatever it might be, when you see it. So can you detect it autonomously? and put it out autonomously within 10 minutes. That's the goal. And uh, we have lots of different approaches here. The beautiful thing is we get hundreds of different ideas. They're all being tested. And the one that works the best is the one that gets the cash. And we all get the benefits of that. Wow. You almost think the insurance industry itself should fund uh, some of this. You know, I look at, at your founders, PG&E, obviously the utility, Betty and Gordon Moore, Hilton Foundation, Mindrew, so, and Lockheed, uh, a lot of nonprofits. Let me just ask you this. So we spoke with an expert, Patrick Brown, from the Breakthrough Institute last week. He said something that really caught my attention because I hadn't heard it before, and it actually goes to the heart of what you guys are trying to do. He said one of the reasons wildfires have become deadlier is that we're not letting them burn as long as we used to over the past 20 years. So there's more vegetation and kind of uh, what you would call tinder that makes these fires spread quickly and spread further. Now, maybe it depends on the area, the situation, what have you, but um, I, that was the first time I'd heard that maybe we're putting them out too quickly. So there, you have to realize that this X Prize is not a solution for everything. Uh, forest management is fundamental. You know, how you light the proper fires, but destructive wildfires that are in the middle of a community should not be there. And one of the challenges is, if you live in an area that's had a wildfire, you can't get insurance anymore. What I hope will happen from this X Prize competition is we'll have a new industry. So imagine if you could hire the winners of this X Prize competition to come and give your, your resort or your vineyard coverage, right? Where because you have this automation system, right? Here's a challenge. While fire insurance pays you after everything's burned down, life insurance pays you next to kin after you're dead, right? This is all about protecting from the wildfire from happening in the first place. No, absolutely. So just kind of, I want, there's one more topic I want to ask you about, but just uh, finally on this. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah, I'm just going to say, listen, one of the goals here is, uh, like you said, if you're a team, if you're an entrepreneur out there that has an idea, go to xprize.org and register as a team. If you want to end this, you know, we have, we're opening up the first prize we've opened up where the public contribute to the prize purse. So if you're sick and tired of this, and I know here in California, uh, myself and family members are, go to xprize.org slash wildfire and contribute 10 bucks or 100 bucks to the prize purse. It goes always to the teams. So if you want to incentivize this being solved, uh, we can do that together. Let's get it from $11 million up to 20 or $30 million. True. Compared to 8 to $10 billion in Maui, it's a drop in the bucket. I, and obviously, we'd love to see once you, know, once you have the entrance and go through it all, we'd love to see what some of these solutions are. Um, and we will talk more about this, by the way, in just a moment. But while you're here, Peter, there was one other major news event last week that I really wanted to ask you about because it surprises me. And, you know, it does it, it doesn't. Here's, here's my point. San Francisco, okay, the, the head... The, neo, the epicenter of, of regulation, I don't want to call it, um, in this country. Sure, and, and technology is yeah. deregulating, of all things, autonomous taxis. And I'm curious if you think this is too fast, if it's a date. Look, I know we have to experiment. I'm all for it. But is San Francisco really, you know, the right place? Is this technology really ready for prime time? So, you know, we've seen this before, Kelly. If you look back 100 years ago, around the year 1900, we went from an all horse and horse and buggy world uh, to cars coming online. And one of the analogies that's interesting is, uh, you know, in around 1900, if you started listening to the newspapers back then, there was this, uh, this massive environmental disaster, which is horse manure. There were 100,000 horses, for example, generating two and a half million pounds of manure in New York City alone every day. And it was literally piling up. 
And it was the cars coming in displacing the horses finally over the course of the next 25 years that relieved us of that problem. So uh, the same technology we're talking about, we've talked about before, Kelly, of AI, what we're seeing in this explosion of AI, will ultimately make uh, autonomous cars safer than humans and much more efficient than humans. All right. So it's early days. we got to experiment. Uh, I think the upside is far greater than the downside. I, I certainly agree in the long run. It just, um, I, I can't help but noting that, you know, California, which sets the regulatory standard for everything in this country, is the first place where we're going to let this massive experiment take place.